Hello guys, welcome back to the channel, and now today I'm going to show you guys how to use constraints in Maya and while well, also using uh, this handy dandy uh, thing called locators in Maya. And uh, the reason why you want to use locators is because it makes uh, creating constraints for objects uh, super easy. So as you can see, um, I have my character posed right here carrying the flower, and so what I really want to do is I want to make it look like uh, this character is actually um, carrying the flower and so um, as you can see you know right now it's kind of hard to do because uh, the only way to control the flower is right down here from this uh, main control and you know that'd be really hard to work with right now because I have to constantly counter animate it and plus these hands aren't attached to the flower at all um, and they're an IK which means if the main body moves away then you know the hands will just like stay where they are and they'll float away as well as these little um, pivot controls will also float away which is not ideal at all so uh, this video is going to show you how to solve all of those problems uh, making constraints and pivots and stuff like that super easy so uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a locator for the iris so I can control it from a little area like around uh, this control instead of the main control so I can make the pivot uh, point easier so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to create and then locator and now before I move the locator to where I want, I'm going to group the locator to itself. And the reason why I do that, guys, is because uh, if you, you know, move the group node, uh, the, those transformations do not affect the locator's main transformations, which is ideal because once the group node is constrained to something else, then, uh, then you wouldn't be able to move the group node at all, but you still would be able to move the locator, which is exactly what we want. Uh, it'll make more sense in a second, guys. So I'm going to, uh, right now I'm just going to rename stuff because it's nice to keep your outliner all uh, neat and organized. So for the locator, um, I'm going to, since it says for the iris, name it iris underscore loc. And this is the iris group, so I'm going to name it iris underscore loc group. All right, perfect, guys. Now I'm going to take the iris loc group and I'm going to click on this controller right here since this is about where I want the pivot. And I'm going to click modify match, match translation. That'll match uh, the translation of that object to where it was. And since I want it to be in the perfect center, I'm just going to uh, uh, click and hold X and drag right here to the center of the graph. That looks about uh, right, like where the pivot point should be. Per oh, oh, whoops, except I have to do that with the iris group, not the actual, uh, or the, the group node, not the actual locator. Um, it's good to, good to have things in the right order, guys. All right, perfect. Uh, so now what I want to do is I want to uh, parent this locator, not the locator group, but the actual locator to the main control. And the reason why I want to do it on the locator, not the group, is because this group is going to be constrained to something else that I'm going to show you guys down the line. And like I said, you know, when you constrain something, that locks out all the movements and makes it impossible to uh, move and key something. And it's just really hard and uh, just really you know not not good you don't want to move uh, or have anything attached to something that has a constraint on it so I'm going to take this uh, one uh, lo locator right here and I'm going to click the main control and I'm going to click constrain parent all right and now as you guys can see when I move the locator it also moves the flower, which is exactly what we want. It's moving right from that pivot point, which is perfect, and also does that when you move the group node. Awesome. So now, now what I'm going to do, guys, is, uh, as you can see, I'm able to move the flower exactly where I want, but the hands do not follow, and uh, that's because right now the hands are in IK and they aren't attached to anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create two more locators, and I'm going to create them for the hands here. So I'm going to create uh, two more. I'm going to group them right here as well. And I'm going to call this one left hand loc. And then uh, I'm going to make sure I capitalize that L there. And then also left hand loc group. And then I'm also going to make sure I have one right here for the uh, right hand loc and the right hand loc group. 
There we go. Perfect. And uh, and the reason why I have both of these hands in IK instead of uh, one in FK, uh, you could have one in FK and then just constrain this um, this iris uh, group to one of the um, FK hands. Uh, but the reason why I have that like this right now is because it'll make it easier when uh, moving uh, moving things that I can only you know so I'll only have to like you know move just the iris and it'll uh, move the hands where. I want to so it's just uh, it's just uh, a way that I find easier if you find it um, easier to uh, have the F uh, FK arm or joint controlling everything then that's totally up to you but um, this is how I'm going to show you guys how to do this thing so uh, similarly to what we did before we're going to click on the um, the locator group and we're going to click on the constr control that we want uh, it to be at I'm going to do match translation there we go I could click match rotation too but I think uh, just translation is the best just so we don't have any extra attributes going on there and oh and then this is another thing guys um, before you constrain anything to anything you want to make sure you get rid of all the keys that are on that controller uh, just because uh, having keys on a controller uh, that has a constraint on it really messes with Maya's whole uh, setup there so just get rid of all those keys and I gotta make sure I didn't key anything here good all right and now um, um, this this locator now is going to become the new controller for uh, the hand. So basically, this controller right now is what's controlling the um, IK hand. But uh, when I constrain everything, then this locator is going to be what's controlling the hand. Uh, so what I what you I want to do, guys, is click. Make sure I have the right hand loc clicked, and then I'm going to click on the right hand control. And once again, constrain parent. And now, as you guys can see, this locator now moves the hand. And the reason why I, I once again parented it to the locator and not the group is because uh, when this group is constrained, uh, it'll have its own attributes and everything. Uh, but I can freely still move this hand or rotate it and put it wherever I want. And uh, actually, I just realized something uh, that I should have done before constraining it. I just realized that it would probably be smarter to uh, actually have the locator um, in place here uh, in a spot where I actually want the pivot to be because um, uh, I should probably move it to where I want the pivot to be uh, because it would make more sense because then I'd actually be piv pivoting around this um, uh, around the uh, flower stem here. So uh, let me actually do rotate this now. Uh, make it about kind of like that. Right, so it looks like it's going right down the middle. Uh, maybe just that uh, a little bit here. Um, so maybe this look better from the uh, maybe this look better from the top view here. It takes a lot of filling around, guys, but eventually you should get something you like. There we go. Uh, I think it'll do about. Da -da -da -da. All right, so let me just go to here. Mm. Just to get it about in the right spot. So make sure this is still lined up in the middle here of the hand. There we go, it kind of works, yeah, there we go, all right. Uh, and then I got a, since this and this share the same X, I'm going to uh, take the X translation from this one and apply it, right, okay, uh, and then apply it here, there we go. And also, I'll uh, probably do the rotation and do the X, yes. All right, I'm going to match the X rotation here. Oh, X, it's going to be opposite, it's going to opposite direction, right. Um, I'll probably zero out all these other rotations, so I don't need these, there we go. All right, and then just take this group, make sure it's lined up nice and neatly here in the middle. All right, here we go. And then to the top view, so it looks like actually the geometry. There we go, oh, so we did need those other transformations, that doesn't really matter though. Um, all right, make sure it's nice and straight in the middle there. There we go. All right, then I'm just going to center this just a little bit better. There we go. Okay, guys, so now now you can create the constraints because the pivot point for the hands will be right in the right spot. So once again, guys, uh, you click on the locator and then the control that you want to constrain and do constrain parent. And now, as you can see, this locator controls the uh, controls the location of this hand, which is just what we want. And it sort of pivots right around the iris. I mean, it's a little bit off, guys, but obviously um, that's why there is both rotation and translation. So you can freely move this however you want. And then uh, we will do the same thing over here with the left hand uh, locator. 
There we go, just like that. Perfect. And now we want to make it so that these locators for the hands are following this locator for the flower. And so what we're, uh, how we're going to do that is we're going to click on the locator groups that we created. And then we're going to click on the locator. Uh, or actually, no, we're going to click on the locator first and then the locator groups. And then we're going to do constrain parent. So now, as you can see, the locator groups have a constraint on them. Which which means they're um, not movable without you know snapping back into place. But as you can see, this uh, main iris control locator now controls the hands, which is exactly what we want. It's perfect, just like that. Awesome. And now we're gonna do the same thing with the left hand here. And oh wait, oh nope. Uh, we gotta, gotta select the parent first, parent, and then the child, and then click constrain. There we go. And awesome. So now this main little pivot controller right here is what's moving these IK limbs. Awesome. All right. So then the next step we're going to do is um, you guys see that these little um, these little pivot controls, these are important controls because they control um, the uh, way that the elbows are pointing here. And uh, I kind of uh, want these controls to be following the hands. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create two more locators. Uh, I know, two more locators again, guys. And I'm going to call the, and I'm actually going to group these uh, two each other right here and I call these uh, left pivot loc and this one's the loc group and then this one's going to be the right pivot loc group all right so then we got the left pivot loc group and the right uh, pivot loc group and so this one obviously the left pivot loc and the right pivot look. Perfect. All right, guys. And so then uh, similarly to how we set up the hands, we're going to want these to be in the exact place where they are. So I'm just going to do match translation here. And uh, since this already is kind of like in the center point of this control, I don't have to worry about rotation or anything like that. Uh, so then just do that again. Match translation. Awesome. And now I'm going to make it so that this locator is controlling this controller. So I'm going to click on the left pivot loc, click on the left pivot and get, click constrain parent. There we go. Perfect. And then I'm going to click on the right pivot locator, the right pivot control and do control parent. And now, of course, uh, like I said, I wanted these controllers to follow the, um, follow the hands. And so I'm going to click on the, uh, right pivot, uh, loc group. And oh, it actually, I just realized. Uh, I realized I messed up these, uh, that's the location of these controls. Uh, so I'm going to rename these to left and right. And sometimes you make mistakes, guys, and that is okay, because you know, sometimes, sometimes you just make mistakes. That's, that's okay, guys. We all make mistakes, we just gotta with them. Uh, well, this way the right control. Uh, what, am I, what am I doing here? There we go. Yeah, name conventions are very important because it helps you say not organized when you have like a lot of locators and constraints flying everywhere. All right, uh, so like I said, guys, we're going to click the uh, locator group, and then we're going to click on this locator right here. Actually, no, no, no. Uh, reverse of that. I keep, I keep always forgetting it. Parent first, parent first, guys, and then the child, and then constrain parent so that now this locator, which controls the hand, also now moves that controller, which is perfect. Obviously, sometimes there's going to be some intersections there, uh, which then you would adjust by moving this locator. You know, it's perfect. And then I'm going to do this on the other side as well. Click the parent and then the child. Constrain parent. Perfect. And once again, this moves this and the iris main controller moves all of them. Perfect. All right, guys, we're almost done here. The last thing I'm going to do is, uh, since, of course, these IK controllers are left behind by the body when the body uh, moves itself, what I'm going to do is I'm going to constrain this main iris control, which, as you can see, has control over all of these IK limbs. Uh, I'm going to have this main I iris control follow the body's cog control, and so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the cog control. We don't need a locator for this because um, this isn't being constrained to anything. It's being the constrainer. And so I'm going to click the cog control right here. And then I'm going to click on the iris loc group. And I'm going to click constrain and parent. 
And now, as you guys can see, the cog controller moves the iris so that you can freely move this character all around the scene and you don't have to worry about anything being left behind. And so, yeah, that's pretty much um, it for the tutorial, guys, on constraints using locators. Uh, if you guys have any questions about anything, uh, feel free to uh, leave a comment. But, uh, yeah, that is pretty much it, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys later. Goodbye.